So some of you have heard this uh, story before, but hopefully, since it's a story about my first time, I can make it seem like it's your first time hearing it. Because uh, we always remember our first time, right? No matter what it is. And this is the story of my first transatlantic flight. And it starts the day of Mercer's graduation in 2006. Not the year I graduated, mind you. Uh, I was just a rising senior at the time and thought I'd go visit my friends, uh, get up early, go to graduation, hear uh, Dr. Godsey give his speech on his last day as the university president. president. Uh, and it's a speech titled, The Power of One, a lesson that I should have learned during that speech uh, because this was a day all about rushing because it's the day of my first transatlantic flight. I'm nervous, I packed my backpack, I'm ready to go. And I should have really thought more about my diet uh, on that day before I got on that plane, but unfortunately I did not. Um, this was a day where in my haste, I forgot about food entirely until I got home from my mom to drive me to the airport and scarfed down two pieces of frozen but yet prepared tombstone pizza and a Diet Coke, creating a great gurgling combustible element in my belly before we head to the airport. And then arriving at the airport, not learning the lesson of the power of just one awful meal, ate a dried Cinnabon from an airport kiosk. So, so the situation was really good about here. Um, and my traveling companion uh, had, had done a really great thing for me, uh, noting that uh, I am a over six foot rather large human male. Um, she thought she had picked a seat for me that did not have another seat in front of me. The second row of the coach section on a British Airways flight. Well, the important lesson here is that the reason that it did not show a seat in front of me is because the first row in coach of a British Airways flight is reserved for people flying with babies. There's an empty area for you to put the bassinet. Well, so we learned this lesson. Like, we think this is going to be the worst thing that's going to happen on this flight is that my leg room has been compromised. But we had many lessons to learn on this, our first transatlantic flight, because uh, the second thing that's an important lesson to know, if you're on the second row of coach on a British Airways flight, even though the nearest lavatory to you it's probably about 10 feet in front of you. The one you're assigned to is about 50 feet behind you. Again, this comes in handy because we're served our meal relatively early in this flight. Second row, we get it first. Um, it was a wonderful Aramark beef lasagna. Smelled great. And having it sit in front of me, I'm like, whoa. The Tombstone Pizza and that Cinnabon not agreeing with each other. Diet Coke's really girdling it up. So. I realize I have to go, I search for the bag. Well, British Airways flight did not provide a sick bag uh, for us on this flight. Don't know why that is. Uh, always check before you leave, uh, Nathan. And the, so I decided I need to get up, even though the seatbelt signs, so I need to get back the 50 feet behind me. Well, they've only made it like 10 rows back. So I tap the very polite British Airways flight attendant on the shoulder and say, ma'am, I'm in a bit of a rush. And she's, well, you know, I've got to serve this food, can you not wait? And I was like, the matter is rather urgent. That, that is an exact quote. Like, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not putting myself in a more formal sense. I, I'm on a British Airways flight, so you know, I gotta keep up appearances. The matter is rather urgent. Um, and needless to say, she didn't believe me, I didn't believe myself. Um, the, the event occurs right there in the middle of the fuselage. Um, there's a spray, and the, the lady looks at me as though she cannot believe that this thing has occurred. Um, and so I, she moves out of the way, I rush back, I get cleaned up, and a male flight attendant uh, meets me right as I leave the lavatory, and he says, sir, were you one of the ones who got covered? I said, no. 
I'm the coverer. <laughs> and really dreading this walk back to my seat that's on the second row. And as I walk back, I see the newspapers down and I see all the people changing their shirts. And I see all these people just looking at me and, and, and everyone's sympathetic. This is a transatlantic flight. We're all in this together. But that's not the worst thing that happens on this flight. So about 20 minutes later, we're flying through the air and I have eschewed my beef lasagna and said, I'm not going to eat that. No, no. I'm going to wait till I get to England and get that good quality British food. Um, the, there's a, a family, catty corner from me, a Jamaican family, and uh, I watch as the dad patiently holds his child while the child's mother eats her beef lasagna. And then she gets up, goes to the lavatory, and he prepares to eat his meal. Maybe it was beef lasagna too. And I watch him as he gingerly places his child in the provided bassinet, the, his wife uh, in the lavatory, and he unwraps his fork to eat his beef lasagna. And notice I didn't tell you a crucial element of what he did once he put the baby in the bassinet, which is crucial because as soon as he unwrapped his fork, we hit an air pocket and dropped 10,000 feet in less than a second. Do you know what happens when you drop 10,000 feet in less than a second? You hit zero gravity. So my beef lasagna floats and moves. Jamaican dad's beef lasagna floats and moves. The baby floats and moves. And this dad puts away his fork, pushes in zero gravity away his tray. And like Jerry Rice makes a perfect diving catch of his child right before its head slams into the wall uh, and saves probably this baby's life. All of us are distraught. None of us are thinking about another crucial element of the story, which is the mom was in the lavatory. <laughs> After he gets his child secure and a flight attendant comes and makes sure the baby's okay and everyone's okay, the mom comes crying out. She has broken her ankle. She is covered in airplane bathroom. And she cries the rest of this flight till we get to Gatwick Airport. When we arrive, a stretcher comes and pulls her off the plane first with the dad clutching his child like he's never clutched anything before. And me, sillily thinking that a little bit of beef lasagna was gonna ruin everything. It just truly, truly proves that there's a certain magic in this element that we have together, this flight, because it puts us all in perspective of what we really need. But just think about it when you're taking that next trip on a plane, that you're doing something safe and secure, and you're not a floating baby. <laughs> Cheers.